How do you do? I'm Christopher Lee. I've learned never to open my door in the middle of the night unless I'm sure who's outside. Of course, everybody's ready to think the worst of a stranger, but who knows what the stranger's thinking? Markheim came knocking on the door of an antique shop, rather like this one, in Robert Louis Stevenson's story. He said he wanted to buy a gift, and after all, it was Christmas Eve. But the Christmas spirit seemed strangely lacking in Markheim, who seemed to be more interested in taking than giving. Well, perhaps he wanted to satisfy the inner man. The trouble with Markheim's inner man is that he wouldn't stay in. No money. Oh, please, sir, you must have. Um... See, it's empty. Oh, oh, let me have that, sir. Oh, please, sir. Let me take the note to the tobacconist shop. He'll change it, and you can let me have a few pennies. Oh, please, sir. Ah, get away, little thief. Mr. Markham. I am just closing, as you can see. But as it is Christmas Eve, I suppose I could make an exception in your case. Ah, my dear Markheim, Christmas is a season of goodwill, I'm told. A time for people to give presents they can't afford to other people that they ignore or even heartily dislike for the rest of the year. Yes, Christmas is a strange time these days. Even the word Christmas is now ridiculous. How much of Christ's example remains in the world dedicated to the quick profit? <laughs> I never give anybody anything. <laughs> it's my own way of being a good Christian. If I give expensive presents to the poor, they will make them unhappy. And the rich don't need presents. It depends on how you see it. It sometimes seems a pity that they have to spend Christmas all on my own. Now here's someone who take pity on me. You'd be sweet and pleasant, wouldn't you, my lovely one? Wouldn't you? Come here, my dear child. Come here. Let me see your mount of passion. Now, what do I see? You are really lovely, and I'm on my own. Yet you prefer the affections of the young who can please your body. Oh, 
No little Christmas kiss for me, then. A few years ago, you'd have jumped at my offer. I used to enjoy Christmas on the mistletoe, kissing the girls. Mm -hmm. Inside, I'm still the same person as always. <laughs> the passion is still there. You change, I suppose it happens after you begin to lose your figure. Good night, my dear, and a happy Christmas. Tell me why you're here. I wanted a present. How oh, charming. Something nice for Christmas. Yes. Hmm. I must see what I can find. Uh, a little jewel? Eh? Possibly a real nice emerald and diamond brace. I'd always accept them. Yes, that would be very suitable. How much would it be? I could manage to let you have it for 800. I'm sorry I can't afford the bracelet. You'll maybe figure a way. I can't afford the bracelet. How much did you feel like spending, my friend? Enough to buy a present for myself. And as I have simple tastes, maybe you can help me out. I suppose you've something in your shop that I can afford. You see, I came to you because of your high reputation. Is that so? Yes. As a child, my parents would give me many presents. They would also give a special party of them. I've money enough for a small gift to remind me of them. Here. Please help me. Please, won't you? Yes. More than this as a rule, but I'll do my best for you. Thank you. I appreciate your help. Just the same, couldn't it be? Inexpensive but attractive. You see, I should like to have something nice to give myself. I'll have to find you a present, my friend. <laughs> really. Let's look at it. Uh, well, I shall try and find something. Something inexpensive, but at the same time, something of beauty. Combination of contrast as a rule, but who knows? I might have something tucked away which will fit the bill. This mirror may save a set. Hmm? Well? This present I have in mind has to be a most impressive present. You see, I want something really nice. This mirror was made in Antwerp in 1800. Do you expect someone like me to enjoy looking at themselves? Do you enjoy it? <laughs> My dear Mr. Mark, I'm an important confession to make. How many men can look back at themselves and be content with what they see? They see themselves. My main purpose here is to find a suitable present for myself. You would perhaps do well to respect it. A suitable present. Yes, a suitable present.
Hey, Mark, I'm, I'm most interested in your opinion about the way people feel. I've always had an interest in psychology. For example, my position of selling stuff like this box here intrigues me. Is that so? I'm surprised. I surprised myself. Somehow I feel that my true vocation was elsewhere. I'm interested in what you are. I wonder somehow if being what one is, is enough. These will do. A pair of exquisite Italian miniatures.
Open up. I said open up. I don't know. Blasted shopkeepers. Hey there. You'll skin me alive if I don't give us something nice for Christmas. Ah. ah. Right. Get nothing. Ah. Silent night. Holy night. Oh. Did I startle you? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid people are often startled when they meet me, my dear Markheim. You know my name? Oh, I do indeed. I don't wish to appear boastful, but I can truthfully say I know everything about you. Perhaps you find that surprising. Very surprising. Indeed. I suppose that's only natural. Most people imagine the vast majority of their actions are known only to themselves, and in a sense it's true. Do you want to know why I'm here? First, please tell me. Who sent you? Nobody ever sends me. I am here because nothing happens in life that I'm not part of. From birth to death, I am with you and beyond. What kind of joke is this? I'd say it's a question of a man's life. What happened to that fool could happen to you quite as easily. Yet I know you feel remorse at the old man's death, do you not? The moment of his death will be always with me. Indeed it will. What reason can you give for murdering the old man? Why should you murder anyone? I murdered him because of my poverty. My conscience-blinding poverty. That's the reason. Ah, so that's your reason. And you say that your poverty blinded your conscience. I think not. For had you stifled your conscience, you would make no mention of it. And I should not be here. Do you not feel it might be your own fault that you are poor and a failure? But that's what I've been blaming myself for. On the contrary, you blame those who are rich and successful. You even kill them when the person you really want to kill is yourself. Kill myself? shopkeeper. He was due home two hours ago. Would it have happened? Maybe it was my inner man. I never really know what Slav will pick it up to. Do you? 